What's up guys, Richard here. Welcome back to my channel. So we're going to continue with the 3D side scroller. I want to show you what I've currently got and this is what we will have by the end of this video. So as you can see the camera follows along and it kind of does this whole hover up and down effect as the player is running along. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And in the next video, we will definitely be doing the animations. I've already built that out. Um, and you'll probably notice here as he's walking backwards and forwards, he looks a tiny bit blurry around the sides. Uh, don't worry about that because I've already seen it with the animations in play and it only looks a tiny bit blurry around the sides because this is a perfectly rectangular or square object. And anyway, this is what we're going to build. So let's open up your project and my project. Okay, this is what you should have at this stage. So what I'm gonna get you to do is open up your player movement script, go down to your unfixed update, particularly where there's this whole gravity section, because we're going to do a little bit of a code cleanup. So pretty much at the moment, it's calculating the gravity every single uh, fixed update, irregardless of whether it's in the air or not. So we can just make this a tiny bit more optimized. And we're just gonna say if it's, if the uh, controller, so we're gonna go, if the controller is not grounded, then we're going to do all this. Otherwise, we're just going to set the velocity of the Y to zero. And that's pretty much it. Uh, that basically just means that if he's not grounded, apply the gravity. If he is grounded, just be zero on the Y. Nothing to worry about with the velocity there. Okay, that was pretty much the only thing we need to do there, but we do need to add one more function. So I'm gonna come down here under the unfixed update and I'm gonna go public and we're going to return a float and we're gonna go get speed and you'll see what we'll use this for in a moment but basically all this does is returns the velocity's uh, speed and obviously we wanna have it affected by delta time so that we get the actual speed during that moment of the frame. Okay, that's pretty much all you have to do to this. Just save that, minimize it and now we need to introduce another script and this will be the script that sits on the actual camera itself. So we're gonna go new C sharp script and we're gonna call this character follow. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just gonna call mine character follow. So there we go, we've got character follow. You can see it's compiling. So I'm gonna get you to select the camera up here and then we're just gonna drag that straight onto the add script section and then just open it up. And of course it's gonna ask me to reload. So that's fine. Okay, now if you look on the right hand side, we've got character follow just here. Okay, so first up, what we're going to do is, again, we're not going to need this whole on enabled or on disabled, and we're not going to need these two using statements up the top. That's pretty much all we need. So, let's start building this bad boy. First, we're going to need a reference to the actual uh, character's controller itself. So, I'm just going to call this the target. The target of the character, or the target of the camera is the character. And then we're going to need something like a zoom level, which is basically how far we are out from that um, character. So we're going to go zoom is equal to, and I've already tested this, and I found that 1,000 uh, 1, is basically a good variable for this. Next, what we're going to need is a height offset. So we're going to come back, that's the zoom, and then we're going to height offset that. So we're going to go public float height and I'm gonna set mine to 200 because I found again, that's a good setting. And then we need a movement speed, how fast the camera can actually move. So we're gonna go public float movement speed. And I found uh, five worked well for that. Next, we're going to need something called a pulse. Now, this will be a little bit hard to explain until you actually see it within its code. And I'm gonna set this to uh, 10F and I'll explain the pulse in a second. But basically, actually, you know, I'll, I'll put all the variables in here, then I'll explain these ones because the next few all kind of work in conjunction. So next we've got a private variable, and this is called the hover height, and that is equal to zero. And then we're gonna have a private float, and we're gonna have a tracker, that's equal to zero. And finally, we're gonna have a reference to the um, character movement script on the character itself. So we're gonna call this the character, uh, what did I call mine? Was it character? I called mine player movement script. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna call this player movement script, and we're gonna say script. Okay, so 
Let's explain these three variables right here. So basically what's going to happen is the, the camera is going to follow the player's movements, okay? Now we don't want it to just perfectly track that, it's, it's ugly, it's like very Mario style, like really really old thing, we, it just doesn't look good. So instead what we're going to have is use the movement script, uh, the movement speed to follow the player. So the player will move and then it will move. Next we've got something that's called the hover height the pulse and the tracker. So the tracker tracks how much time has passed and then that is fed into a sign uh, which basically if you guys have seen a sine wave what it does is it goes up, down, up, down, up, down. So that allows us to have a camera movement that goes up, down, up, down. And now the hover height is basically going to be uh, how much to multiply that sign by and the tracker is where through that sine wave we are and the pulse is going to be the designer's end of how much to multiply the... Uh, no. So the hover height is going to be the variable that stores how much the pulse is actually multiplied by. So the pulse is going to be the multiplier on top of the sine wave itself and the hover height is going to store that with a few other little things which you'll see in a moment. I hope that makes sense. Basically how it's going to work is like this. When the person's standing still, the camera is going to be looking at them. As the, camera, as the person moves, the camera is then going to start hovering up and down, up and down. But when the person comes to a still again, then it's going to stop hovering up and down and it's just going to look at them. And you'll see how this works a lot better when we actually get the code in there. So let's type this in. Okay, so in the on start, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the actor's position. Remember the actor at this stage is the camera and we're going to set that. And we're going to set it to the target position, which is the player, plus a new vector three. And we're going to have zero by the height by uh, the zoom. So what it's going to do is as soon as it starts, it's going to instantly grab the camera, offset it by the zoom, then offset by the height then we're looking at it. So that's good. Next we need to set this whole script. So we want a reference to the uh, character controllers and the character controllers player movement script if you see over here on the right. We want a reference to that. So we're going to go player movement script and this whole function here get script of the target simply goes hey grab from the script from that actual player and then you'll s just yeah you don't have to do it within the actual like designer variables it just makes things a little bit more simple okay so now on the on update so what we're going to do is we're going to do this whole tracker thing so we need to track the time so that's quite easy we just go uh, tracker is equal to the plus of the delta time and that's just going to add up over time Okay, then we need to set this whole hover height. So the hover height is equal to, now remember I said we're going to use a sign which gives us a wave effect. And then we're going to slap in the tracker that will tell us how far along that sine wave we are. And then we're going to times that by the script get speed. So remember, if the player is not moving, that's going to be times zero. If the player is moving, that's going to be times whatever amount that speed is set to. So maybe it's like 100 or whatever. So then that would put a big wave effect. But then we want the players, well, the designer, to have some control over that actual wave effect. So that's where this whole pulse comes into it. They can set that. Maybe they want a lot more wave or maybe they want less wave but they want that wave to also uh, be affected by the player's movement. So then what finally I've got is just kind of like a little safety check, which is like if the scripts.getSpeed um, is smaller than 2, because, oh, whoop, well, is smaller than 2, then we're going to go the hover height is just going to be equal to 0. So basically, if the speed is like a tiny, tiny little bit, I don't want a tiny, tiny little bit of hover while looking at the player. It's just pointless and it can be a little bit distracting. So just zero that out basically. Okay, so that's the on update. Now we need to do the physics related stuff. So we're gonna go uh, public, if I can spell public, override, void, on fixed update. So now this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. So we're, first we're going to do a smooth movement following the actual player um, 
yeah, just following the actual player. Sometimes I lose my train of thought. So we're going to go smooth follow the player. So what we're going to do is first we're going to make a vector 3 and we're going to get the target position. So this is where we want to move to. So we're going to go, well, the target position is equal to the player, which is target.position, plus a new vector 3. And you'll notice, in fact, what we're doing is pretty much the same as up here. So I can copy this part because it's going to be similar. So we're going to go, okay, so we want then to move back and then we want it to be the zoom because this is not where it's looking. This is where the camera itself is. Uh, but we do want to add on top of this, the hover height. This will give the camera that whole up and downwards movement. Okay, so this is where we want to be, the target position. Now we need to create the smooth movement to that. So smooth position. And we're going to go, that's a vector 3, and then we're going to smooth step. Remember, that makes it a nice smooth movement between two vectors. So the first vector is the camera's current position. And then we're going to go to the target position. And then we're going to go time.delta time. So we're going to make this frame rate independent. And then we're going to move that by the movement speed. Okay. And then next we're going to go actor.position. So this is where we're going to set the actual camera itself, and we're just going to set it to the smooth position. Now, this should position the camera, but not rotate it where needed. So let's just double check that that works. Okay, so it's compiling the script. I've pressed play. Uh, okay. Oh, wait. Nope, that's not going to work, because first I need to select the camera. And have I got that in there? You see how I haven't got a target? So let's just drag the character controller into that. Now let's try. Okay, so that's working, but my platform is a bit small. So let's just quickly uh, expand that platform out massively. So press 3 for scale, and just scale that bad boy. Scale him, scale him. Just go crazy. Okay, cool. So... Here we go, and you can see it's doing that whole s rotating up and down, up and down, but it's kind of weird because he's almost going off screen. This is where the whole um, rotation part's going to come into it. So we're going to do a smooth rotation now. So we're going to go smooth rotate the camera towards the player. Okay, so we're going to go vector 3. And we're going to go direction vector, so we need to figure out the direction that we're going to point. And we're going to go from the target's position, so from the player's position, we're going to take the camera's position. That will give us a, um, a uh, direction, but then we need to normalize it, and that will give us a direction vector, normalized. Okay, so now we've got the direction vector. We need our start rotation, so we're going to go quaternion. And we're going to go start rotation is equal to the quaternion dot uh, rotation. Uh, which one is it? It's rotation. Is this it? Rotation. Yes, rotation matrix. So we're going to make a quaternion from the uh, camera's rotation. Okay, cool. Now we need our target. So our target rotation. So this is what we want to face at. So we're going to go quaternion. So we're going to make a quaternion. Look rotation. So we're going to make this quaternion then face towards the direction vector. And of course we need to give it an up. So it needs to know what way is up in this world. And we just give it the vector 3 up. Because I haven't got crazy gravity. Now we can actually make the smooth rotation. So we're going to go quaternion. Uh, smooth rotation. And we're going to go quaternion. And then we're going to go slurp, which is basically a nice smooth lerping for a quaternion. We're going to go with our start rotation. Then we're going to go to our target rotation. And we're going to do this over time. So we're going to make it frame rate independent by going time.delta time. And then I'm just going to put a variable like 10 in here. You guys can like make a, a parameter if you want to do that. And now we just got to update the actual rotation of the camera. So of course we need to turn this quaternion back into a uh, vector for the um, matrix. So we're then going to go rotation quaternion, and then we're going to go smooth rotation, and that should pretty much do it. So if we go save, we go back into the game, 
We wait for the scripts to compile, press play, and there we go. So that's pretty much it. Now, all you guys got to do uh, once you've got that up and running is you just select your camera and you can just play around with the movement speed, the pulse. Um, I don't recommend a very high pulse. If I go 100 for the pulse, this is probably going to be like berserk. Oh wait, whoops, I accidentally stopped that. You can actually change these variables while you're running the game, so you don't have to do it. Like, whoa, that's a, that's a crazy pulse. Here we go. Whoa! So yeah, you don't want a crazy pulse. I found 10 was a good uh, variable for that. Uh, okay, then you could up your movement speed if you wanted, so you could have like 50, which would just be spastic because it would actually overshoot. But you could have it really low, like 3 which means he's going to fall, the camera's going to fall really far behind the player, which maybe if you're trying to create a cinematic effect might work, but yeah, I, I generally wouldn't play it. I think I found a pretty good um, a set of variables there. So anyway, that's pretty much it. If you guys have liked this video, like it, share it around, sub to the channel, see you all in the next video.